to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm going to tackle my friend's squeaking furnace blower motor. The motor is only a few years old, but started to squeak last year. In order to get ready for the next winter, we need to address what's wrong. So why don't you join me as we try to muffle this motor? I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. In this video, we have lots of potential issues, such as line voltage, spinning parts, abrasives, and dropping hazards. If you don't feel comfortable doing these things, then don't. Now let's get started. A few years ago, my friend replaced his furnace blower motor with this one. Because of where the motor was located, the oil holes were difficult to get to and the motor was not lubricated. After a few years, the motor started squeaking. My friend tried oiling the motor at that time, but he kept hearing the squeak. Let's check it out. The motor bearings seem pretty tight. The rotor should turn a lot more freely than this. I'll attach a pigtail to the motor and run it to see what it sounds like. It's tight, but doesn't sound too bad. Let's run it for a while so it can warm up. Oh, there's the squeak. It sounds like it's coming from the rear bearing. Let's dig into the back bearing. Before we work on the motor, tape a bag over the plug so we don't inadvertently plug it in. First thing to do is to mark the relative location between the end cap and the motor frame. Then loosen the nuts on the four long screws that hold the motor together. It's much easier to do it now while the motor is still on the base. Then remove the clamps that hold the motor to the mounting base and lift off the motor. Now remove the four long screws and then tap the rear end bell off. Be careful since things can pop apart suddenly and either fall or break. The shaft looks a little blue with some baked on gunk. The outside diameter of the shaft is only 5 ten thousandths of an inch smaller than the inside diameter of the bearing. Much too tight for a sleeve bearing. We'll clean the shaft using a rotary tool and some polishing compound. Remember your eye protection.
It really smoothed up the bearing contact surface. I'll also lightly polish the inside of the bearing to make sure there is no residual gunk in there. Then we'll clean both the shaft and the bearing very thoroughly to remove all traces of the polishing compound. This is a capacitor start motor. The capacitor and a starting winding are switched into the motor circuit at low speeds to help get the motor to its operating RPM. After the motor reaches a certain speed, the weights on this starting switch swing out and open the switch. This cuts out the capacitor and starting winding, leaving the motor to run on the running winding only. The switch is a little gunked up with oil and dirt, so let's clean it and lubricate it with some dry silicone spray. While we're in here, we might as well look at the front bearing. Let's put the rear end bell on to hold everything in place. Put a little light oil on the shaft. Then carefully line up the marks you made earlier and gently put the end bell on. On this bearing, there was a little piece of felt that was used to deliver oil to the bearing. Make sure that doesn't get caught between the shaft and the bearing. Before we remove the front end bell, Remove the pulley and then clean up any burrs that are on the shaft with a honing stone. The bearing material is pretty soft and could be damaged by burrs during the removal. After the burrs had been smoothed out, I still have to tap the end bell off. It seems that the front bearing and the shaft had the same gunk on it that the rear bearing had. In fact, the shaft outside dammer was almost the same as the bearing inside dammer. Make sure you note the location of any seals as you take it apart. This one has a rubber seal between the bearing and the outside cap. I'll polish up the shaft and the front bearing just like I did for the rear bearing. Then I'll clean everything carefully to remove all traces of the polish. Put some oil on the shaft, line up the marks you made earlier, and then carefully slide the end bell on. Give the end bell a little tap to drive it home, and then reinstall the long screws and nuts. Finally put the motor back onto the base plate 
and reinstall the mounting clamps. Let's see how it sounds now. So far so good. Let's let it warm up for a while. Well, it's been running for a while and still sounds good. Let's compare how long it takes to coast down now compared to before we polish the shafts. Much longer. I think we've taken care of the squeak. Thanks for joining me today. We fixed the squeak in the blower motor by cleaning, polishing, and lubricating the motor shaft and bearings. We also cleaned and lubricated the starting switch. I think this motor is ready for service. My friend is going to install oil extension tubes so he can more easily lubricate the motor annually to keep it running for a long time. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in life with David. See you soon.